Are here with Miss Kelsey Scott. We are so excited to have you. You came to FAMU maybe a year ago, um, and we're just excited because you have a little discussion going on with the FAMU students. So tell us how you are. How have you been doing? I've been doing great. You know, I've um, been working on some projects that I've really enjoyed that have uh, stepped outside of the box of some things that I've been seen in, and so that's always fun to to present something new. Yes. Um, and I'm always glad to be back in Tallahassee. So. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. Um, so you are a writer, yes. you're a FAMU School of Journalism graduate, mm -hmm. um, and you're an Emmy-nominated actress as well. And I want to talk about your transition from becoming um, a journalist to an actress. How has that been? If I'm honest, then I never really became a journalist. <laughs> um, uh, after I graduated from FAM with my journalism degree, I spent a year working in Atlanta as an actress mm -hmm. um, at the Alliance Theater and several other theater companies there. And I had developed a, a, an affinity for the production side of film while I was at FAM shooting Chocolate City um, because I had a, lo a long career as an actress but not necessarily in film and so that was really kind of my introduction to it and I became really entranced with what was happening behind the camera right. and so that's when I decided after the year working in Atlanta that I'd actually pursue a degree in film and mm -hmm. so I, I canvassed the country for <laughs> for film schools and found that I had been you know across the railroad tracks from the one that I wanted to actually attend and so um, the transition was much more about going from writing um, as you would as a journalist mm -hmm. to writing as you would as a filmmaker so okay that was more of the transition that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. so how would you say the writing styles are different how, how would you explain that they are absolutely different. I mean, it's a completely different type of narrative. One, obviously, is reporting the news and um, and is very, uh, not, not just fact-based, but getting out the uh, the maximum amount of information in the in the fewest words possible. Uh, and the other is storytelling, you know, but in a different context. It is, you know, characters that we have created. And uh, we're talking about dialogue now. We're talking about creating the blueprint for a film. So they are entirely different mediums uh, requiring a completely different skill set so even though I could legitimately say that I was a writer I had to learn how to be a screenwriter mm, okay understood um, so what brings you back here to Tallahassee at this time because I try to come back as often as possible um, I was invited by Florida State to speak to diversity in the entertainment industry so tonight we will view some of my work and then we'll do an interview where I'll just basically talk to the challenges of not only being a woman of color in entertainment, but also uh, what I see as the, the scope, the landscape now, and, and how we can become even more a part of the solution and the progression of opportunities for people of color. Oh. Oh, that's going to be so good. I'm so excited. <laughs> I actually have to get on the road after this, but oh. I can't wait. I know it's going to be recorded and I'm going to watch every bit of it. Right. That's going to be a wonderful Good. conversation. I'm so excited. You are an Emmy nominated actress and I have to keep bringing it up, bringing it up because it's huge. Um, I'm proud of you. Thank you. And um, just to see a black woman um, excelling in that, it's just really amazing. I too am an aspiring actress, so it's, all, it's wonderful to see um, a family graduate who uh, came from the School of Journalism mm -hmm. transition into becoming an actress. You're truly an inspiration. And mm -hmm. I want to talk about your um, role um, in 12 Years of Slave, mm -hmm. 12 Years of Slave, excuse me, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about um, a lot of the other roles that you've played and how you feel about hearing your name as being Emmy nominated. What were you feeling? It was uh, surreal, you know. Um, I think when you start to talk about those types of um, very specific recognitions, you know, um, from your peers, there is a, a special significance to it. I mean, if you know, and in terms of like pursuing acting, the idea of an Emmy, the idea of an Oscar, the idea of a Tony, you right. know, those are yeah. those are things that we, we hold in very high regard. Um, and specifically for this one uh, to come from my peers in something that I have been doing for so very long. I mean, professionally, um, I've kind of been in and out. I, my first kind of professional acting job. Um, I think I was six, but mm. it was theater, mm. you know, and I really wasn't looking at this as a career. It was just 
I'm a hyperactive child, and my mother's trying to focus the energy into something that's productive, you know what I mean? Right. Um, so I don't even know that I really started looking at it as a career. Even I, I did a sitcom when I was a child, but again, it was just fun, you right. know? I was having a good time. Um, I did theater when I first moved out to Los Angeles. Again, I was just having a good time, and it, uh, it was actually maybe 2007 when I made a decision that because I'd stepped away from it because I was on the production side for so much I was doing a lot of screenwriting I was doing some directing mm -hmm. and um, though initially I'd wanted to do all of them the industry didn't kind of embrace that idea of being in front of and behind the camera simultaneously ah. so I put acting to the side and wanted to build up my career in the other disciplines and so I was at a point where I felt like um, I can now begin to control my narrative. Mm -hmm. And so while you might not be able to see that being multifaceted is um, is is a plus, is a bonus, right. I'm going to teach you how that's going to be in my career, in my life. And so to make those decisions, to go through all of those processes, to go through all those transitions, to go from, oh, it's just something fun, to no, 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 this is actually my passion and I'm not going to let you tell me whether or not I can do it. And then for somebody to say, hey, you're doing an okay job. Mm -hmm. It was surreal. Yes. You know, and uh, it continues to be an honor. And the idea that that moniker forever exists in front of my name in terms of the industry is is rather humbling. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's beautiful. Such a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that um, you started at seven. Uh, well, I, the first pre professional job was mm -hmm. at six. I think the first time I stepped on stage, I might have been like three. Oh, <laughs> but it wow. was a pageant, so I don't know how much you got, <laughs> you know. No, 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 um, no shame to the Little Miss Dogwood Festival. But yeah, I'm not sure that counts. It's the beginning of my acting career. Mm -hmm. And when did you? Okay, that starting at six. When, as you were growing up, when did you realize that that was something you were passionate about? I think I was always passionate about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I just didn't view it as a career path. Mm. It was just something I really enjoyed doing that I had a lot of fun with. That you know, p playing make believe, but in a much larger setting with lots more eyes on you. Right. So I, I always had an affinity for it. It was always something that I loved. It was just a while before I decided this is is what I'm going to dedicate my professional life to. Understood. Understood. And um, being that you are a FAMU School of Journalism graduate, mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about how FAMU or how the School of Journalism has helped um, with your career? What what tools um, have you learned being at the School of Journalism that's helped you with your career? Well, what I'd say is that um, craft is important. You know, um, popularity fades. And so there has to be there has to be something behind it that that makes you worthy of having a career in a certain discipline. Mm -hmm. And so while I didn't learn to write screenplays at FAM, and while I had written beforehand, I um, my grandmother was a, a writer by passion, and so I'd been writing uh, creative works before then. Uh, there was a, a discipline and a craft that I learned as a journalism student mm -hmm. that was as much about telling stories as anything else. It was about structure, it was about finding the important points, it was about front loading, it was you know not burying the lead, and that those same skill sets played into my career. And I think that ultimately, whether you're in front of or behind the camera, you are a storyteller. And I part of my evolution as a storyteller was at FAMU. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And no, I see. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing That was a good visual. I'm yeah. seeing it. <laughs> um, as, as you uh, continue with your career and your passion uh, for acting, what, what's next? Where, where do you see yourself being next? What, what projects are coming up? I can never say which, pro I mean, unless I'm actively working on it. I can mm -hmm. never say what's coming next, but I can say that I'm going to have things I want to do. Um, you know, I'm I'm a fan of, like, the old school rom-coms. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to get my hands dirty with, you know, reinventing the old school. More of, you know, more of the same but different. Mm -hmm. you know? um, our faces, our stories in that same kind of context because I think um, we have begun to explore um what there is, all those layers of the onion for especially people of color. And I think I would love to continue digging deeper in that. And um, rom-coms are one. Uh, I'd love to see uh, a production about Black Wall Street. 
Um, wow. I'd love to do a production where I get to wear a flapper dress. I don't Ooh. know what the story is. Just, <laughs> just want to wear the dress? <laughs> right, right. You make the story work. Um, I'm also a vocalist, so I'd love to start bringing that side of my resume on film. I mean, I've done it on stage yes. in, in musical theater, but there are certainly um, stories that are musically based where I'd be able to do that. Um, and I want to do things that are uncomfortable mm. because I think that you, there is no comfort in growth. Yes. And there is no longevity in stasis. And so I don't want to rest on any laurels that have been given to me, and I don't want to ever want to feel like. Um, I'm even in a position where I can phone it in. You know, it's mm -hmm. not it's not my mindset, it's not my personality, but life is life and you never know what happens. But I always want to be challenging myself and be challenged by the people around me. I want to be on set and on screen with people who are better than I am mm -hmm. so that I have something to step up to. I mean, listen, you look across at Viola Davis and you don't get to slack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, she is a, a, a walking, um, film school, a walking acting school. Absolutely. She is, um, her, her prowess uh, on screen, on stage is palpable. And so put me in the room with you mm -hmm. and you have to grow, you have to step up. And I like those types of situations. You know, I've been fortunate to work with some, some icons in the industry and there's kind of nothing like on the job training, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and then when they are, you know, like Viola, when they're sweethearts to boot, then that's even better because there's, there's a connection of artists, you know, and a connection of women of color. So long answer to your short question, I want <laughs> I love to it. do more. Mm -hmm. I want to do more and I want to do more difficult yes. um, so, that, um, so that I can rise to the challenge. Yes, and I love what you said about how challenge bring, brings growth. Mm -hmm. That's something my mom constantly, um, as we were growing up, and my father constantly told us, if you're, if you're uncomfortable, you're growing. There it is. Mm -hmm. if, and when things get rough, mm -hmm. um, what do you do when you feel unmotivated? Well, I'll say this. There has never been a time when I feel unmotivated. You know, um, there have been uh, dry spells and, um, and, and significant challenges and moments of self-doubt and am I doing the right thing? Am I here for the right reasons? Is this really something I can do? All of that happens, but I always want it. And I think that that is a barometer of whether or not you're in the right place because I think that we are all capable of doing many things. You know, I mean, I, I have a, an undergraduate degree in broadcast journalism, so I am capable and absolutely able to walk into, uh, to walk into the career of a journalist. What I have decided is to live in the career of an actress and a writer and a producer. And so I made that decision and I understand that that is what gives me personal creative life mm. and if that's the decision that I've made if that's authentic to myself I'm never unmotivated I just might not be in the position to move forward and um, the same way I talked about you know you grow when you're uncomfortable you have to be careful of 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 the pitfalls of complacency you know um, it's a it's a gig job you know, you, you've got this one, it's a starts, it starts, it finishes, and then you're looking for another one or you're overlapping so that you can keep the lights on, so you can, you can keep the career going. And I've certainly been in situations where the paychecks have come in rather regularly and you kind of want to sit back and you're like, ah, oh, there's no real fire behind me right now because I know that my rent is getting paid, but that's the danger. I think sometimes when you are, um, when that type of scenario presents itself, you don't recognize that as getting comfortable. You just think, oh, I've, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm living my career. I'm doing well. And then you have to find ways to make yourself uncomfortable. Mm. Because, because that, that sitting back I and chilling that. out, mm -hmm. like that's not, you know, if you're in the gym, you don't just like stand on the treadmill. You're right. <laughs> you the gym membership. But if something doesn't turn on, if the treadmill's not already going, turn it on. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to create an atmosphere that you are always growing and moving. And that motivation, that's not external. 
that's internal. So that's that's the fire that drives you to be in this thing. Right. And sometimes the fire gets um, doused by any number of outside factors. You've got to figure out how to relight it. You've got to fight, figure out how to stoke it so that um, so that you are constantly in motion. Got there it. Is, there is no progression if you are if you're standing still. I love that. That's that's the uh, realist perspective to look at um, when you have a career and you're just you're doing well. Mm -hmm. You're doing well. You're doing okay. Everything is falling in place. Your bills are being paid, like you said, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you're not being challenged. You're right. not moving forward. You're just kind of stagnant, and you never want to be stagnant in a career like that. So, mm -hmm. Kelsey has the right. Kelsey has the right things to say. I'm okay. Trying, man. No, we you're saw, doing we just it. Out the street trying to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I want to bring up is for aspiring actresses um, such as myself and many others um, who are African American women. What would be your advice um, as to how to continue on this journey and uh, to better yourself through this process and to get through it and to put yourself in the right situations in order for you to become you know, successful in this area? That's 50 questions, by the way. <laughs> that is not a single question. Um, I would say um, in terms of advice to, to any aspiring actor, whether uh, whether or not it's a person of color or um, someone with more um, kind of innate opportunities available, I think you have to put yourself in the right mindset, and mm -hmm. that is that this is not this is not a a, a, a microwave career. You know what I mean? Um, it is absolutely um, a marathon, and if you go in knowing that, then I think you're a lot more prepared than a lot of people who might just be after the fame and the flash of that and it's really pretty and I'm sure it's fun but it's also fleeting so do you you want a career or do you want a job you know and if you want a career then you put in the work you put in the time um, you are disciplined you are consistent and you understand that this is the long haul and if you walk in with that mindset then I think a lot of the other things fall into place because you're not expecting instant results. Um, you are expecting that it's going to require much of you because it is, um, it's a career with a lot of perks and inherent in that is that you have to earn those. You know, you have to, it's not something that's just handed over to you. So prepare yourself as a professional in terms of your craft, study. Study not just in an educational format, but study other people's works. You wanna be a writer, read. You know, mm -hmm. you, want to, you want to be an actor, watch other actors get into uncomfortable situations. So prepare yourself as a professional and to prepare your mind to stay in the game and be prepared to play chess. Oh, I love her. <laughs> no, I love her. Seriously, I've never heard that the process is, and we are, as our generation is a, um, a microwave generation, as they would say. We like instant gratification. So the fact that you said that this is um, not microwavable. This is a marathon. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important just for any, anything, mm -hmm. anything, any career, any field that you're in. So oh, that was good. <laughs> no, I'm going to quote that. I'm not okay. kidding. Under Kelsey Scott, that was really, really good information. I want to thank you so oh, much for, for your time me. and just being here. And <laughs> we just appreciate you. We can't wait to see you in the future. And we're so happy that uh, you came back to your alma mater and came to talk to us and we, your family, you know, so we really appreciate it. Always, we're at our nation. Thank you. <laughs> Kelsey Scott.